Hello, everyone. I, again, am Sydney English, for those of you that don't know me. My summit presentation is on the topic of sideline reporting and the story of a woman in a man's world. Quotes for a reason. <laughs> Um, so I'm pursuing a career in broadcast journalism. Specifically, uh, I want to go into sports journalism. Even more specifically, I love college football, and I would love to be a sideline reporter for some college team. Um, my team is the Louisville Cardinals. We beat University of Kentucky last weekend, which so I just had to give them a little shout out. Go Cards. Um, I grew up in a football family, watching, playing, and just loving every minute of football. My grandpa had five sons, and they all played football in college and just kind of in high school and throughout all of their lives. My grandpa coached all over the world, really. Um, here's a picture in the top left corner of him with Dan Marino when he was the Miami Dolphins quarterback coach. My dad played in high school, and then went on to play at like three different colleges and then played in Europe for a little bit. And then my childhood was him playing arena football. Um, the top left picture is one of my favorite pictures of me and him after a game, just like half asleep watching the football team. And then I dabbled a little bit in powder puff myself, so just thought I need to throw that out there. Um, so yeah, I, thought I started thinking about journalism in high school. I took a trip to New York and got to visit NBC Studios, and they let me do like a little bit of anchoring. Um, I really wasn't great at it, but I was like, this is really fun. And so, the, um, so then that just kind of took off. And then when I visited Biola, I met Stu, my very first like, professor that I met. Stu, so we had a little luncheon. And he took me to Studio B. <laughs> this is a very embarrassing picture from 18-year-old Sydney, ver her first visit in Studio B. And um, so then throughout my time at Biola, I have just fallen more in love with storytelling and with the art of journalism as I've learned more about it. And so my love of journalism and my love of football um, combine to create the dream of becoming a sideline reporter. So, first of all, I know you're all probably thinking women and sports, like how, how do these things go together? <laughs> like what? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Well, actually, it totally does, and I am going to tell you why. <laughs> um, I am, first of all, a prime example just from my background, um, growing up loving sports. And then, um, so yeah, so first I want to start out with the question, What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of women, sideline reporting, sports journalists? Anybody have anything? Okay, I, I assumed, I planned for that. So pretty much most people, when I say I want to be a sideline reporter, they say, oh, Erin Andrews. That's the first person that comes to mind because she's famously known not only for sports journalism but for her career um, in modeling and just the way that she's like done a lot of other things. So with that, um, she, but beyond all of the other things she's done, she's an ama amazing journalist. So when people ask me, I want to be just like Erin Andrews, you know, like maybe, sure. Um, so if it's not Erin Andrews that comes to mind, maybe it's the 15 hottest sideline reporters in sports today. <laughs> this is the first page that comes up when you Google fe female sideline reporters. So for the general population, this profession is thought of as just a pretty face standing in front of a camera and just kind of doing what they're told, reading a script. Um, but realistically, women have to be much more knowledgeable and work much harder than men in the world of sports journalism to even be respected and to be considered professional and taken seriously. A perfect example of this is <laughs> Cam Newton. Um, I'm sure you guys have maybe heard this interview, but if not, I will play it for you. It takes a, a lot of pride in seeing your receivers play well. Devin Bush has seemed to really embrace the physicality of his routes and, and making, getting those extra yards. Does that give you a little bit of an enjoyment seeing those guys rush the QB ball? It's funny to hear females talk about routes. So, that's good. So this is the world of female sports journalism. They come, well, I guess 
Jordan Rodriguez was the uh, interviewer here, and she comes prepared with this really knowledgeable question to ask Cam Newton and just kind of gets laughed at. And so this is like one of the main challenges that I will eventually face in this field. Another example of this, um, Chrissy Teigen, who is already like, you know, pretty controversial on Twitter, but she just tweets, she just answers a question about sports and has like a pretty, pretty knowledgeable answer and everyone is just pretty much shocked that she has something to say about sports. Um, so anytime a woman has an intelligent thing to add to um, a sports conversation, the world is shocked. But in reality, the job is way more, the job of sideline reporting is way more than just standing on the sidelines waiting for an opportunity to be in front of the camera. Um, don't get me wrong, the front row seats to an amazing college football game would be definitely a perk of the job. But the job itself is much more than that. It's researching and keeping up with play, players' backgrounds and stats. Um, and it's really just about personalizing the game for the viewers and finding the perfect interview um, with a coach or a player mid-game or at the end of the game or just keeping the viewers involved. A perfect example of this is one of my um, people that I really look up to, Dawn Davenport. She is a, um, she works for SEC Network, um, ESPN, and this is one of her, one of my like favorite in-game interviews of all time. So, I'm gonna share that with you. Field with Dawn Davenport. Well guys, we have a, a unique perspective here. We're gonna spin this next series with offensive coordinator Eddie Grant. You're gonna kind of talk us through play calling, what you're seeing, what you're liking. This is a really cool thing. We appreciate you doing this. Now I want to ask you, are you calling scripted plays in this game or are you looking and reacting to the defense? We started out that way just to kind of get Steven going and, and some plays we wanted to get to. But right now, we're gonna try to take a shot here. So this is my favorite part right here. She she pretty much gets him to talk through the game for the viewers. And then right here, this is my favorite part. She's just right up here. She's like, okay, this is it. This is the game. She's right in the middle. She's getting that first hand action for the viewers. And, and she gets feedback from the player. I just think it's a really good interview. And so yeah, it's just like goals for me, John Davenport. <laughs> um, so throughout my time at Biola and throughout my different classes that I've had the opportunity to take <laughs> that I've had the opportunity to take. Well, one of them, um, with Dave Denholm, I got to take a sports uh, journalism class, and that's the top left corner at um, Staples Center. I got to shoot a stand-up on the court after a game. We got to sit in on a press conference with the players. We got to do the weather with Eagle Vision. I had an internship at Wave Free News, my embarrassing selfie with the rain jacket. I thought it was really cool. For that, and then most of all, I've learned so much about being in front of the camera, about just telling stories from Stu Olson, none other than, and his pyramid of love, and that that's the most important thing about journalism and storytelling, and I am really thankful for all of those things, and all of the time that I've learned, um, and all the different, um, journalistic strategies that I've learned through my classes at Biola. Um, so then back to my childhood growing up in a football family as a huge football fan um, myself, I've gained a personal insight into what viewers want and what people are interested in. Um, I spent a lot of time with my brother and his team growing up, the top left corner, his senior year in 2014, they were the national champions of, um, in, their, in their football program. And so that was just a really cool opportunity. These guys pretty much like were my friends in high school. So this is me hanging out with like the offensive line of this like national 
um, nationally ranked college or high school football team. And then my brother signed at Western Kentucky University to play Division I football. Um, and so he has been a really big inspiration for me. Um, and he was pretty much my hero. I learned basically everything I know about not only football, but about perseverance and hard work um, from my brother, Tyler. And so then three years ago, he passed away in a house fire. Um, and going through this tough situation with my family motivated me to continue to learn more about football and, the, and about the game that we shared a love for. Um, and I think it's just prepared me, uh, it's made me stronger and prepared me to face all the challenges that will come as a sports reporter. And I just, yeah, I feel like um, being a young woman in this field, there is a lot of things that I will face and um, this challenge I face in my life and just my relationship with him and his influence in my life has motiv me, motivated me to carry on that legacy and continue that through my career. So moving forward, I have um, one semester left here in uh, Los Angeles at Biola University. And so I plan to just continue to take advantage of the opportunities that are given to me out here. Um, and honestly, uh, upon graduation, I don't know where I'll be. I will be looking for a job throughout next semester and once I graduate, um, and I'm pretty much open to moving anywhere, um, which is why I have all of these different options up here. Hopefully, dream job would be SEC Network, um, hanging out with Don Davenport. And then, you know, so maybe Sacramento, maybe Charlotte, maybe Dallas, could be anywhere in the world. And I am excited to see what the Lord's plan will be for me. And I am... Um, and I'm looking forward to pursuing that to the fullest extent, and I'm looking forward to see what the Lord has in store for me in my future. So, um, and now I would like to open the floor for questions, and thank you for listening to my presentation. Thank you.